Now let's derive the homogeneous wave equation for the electric field in the phasor domain. So, in the previous videos, we made a couple assumptions that are going to help us here. Recall that we see the tilde on our E's and our H's. This, in the Ulibi textbook, means that we are in the phasor domain. Next, we made the linear and isotropic assumptions. That goes for these. It tells us that our materials that we're dealing with the wave in are a bit more simple, so we can simplify them. Uh, by this relationship. Then we said that we were in a source-free environment. That simplified Gauss's law for electrostatics to being equal to zero instead of this rho v. Then we introduced this concept of the complex permittivity here, which we used in Ampere's law to simplify the right-hand side of the equation a bit. Using these assumptions and simplifications, we are going to derive the wave equation for the electric field. Now, when we do this, what this means is our goal is to write an equation that is just a function of e, right? But we will try to make it so that there is no h's in there, so that we could come up with some equation. And it might be pretty complicated, but it's still an equation that just can, includes e, so that we could potentially solve it. So let's get started. Let's start with Maxwell's equations, and let's start with Faraday's law. From Faraday's law, we'll start here, and let's say, let's take the curl of both sides. And that curl is in red. Now note that on the right-hand side, H is the only field term, so we're just going to add this curl uh, into the H part. Now, let's go back to our Maxwell's equations and look at Ampere's law. And it turns out that we already have a definition in Ampere's law for the curl of H. So let's go ahead and substitute that in here. So we ha had the curl of the curl in Faraday's law, and now we're going to substitute Ampere's equation in here. And that gives us this relationship at the bottom here. And it looks like we're already on the right track because we can already see that there's just two field terms here and they're both E. We'll see that we can simplify this a bit more though. So now we have an equation and we have the electric field on each side and we've eliminated the H field. Now we can simplify this a bit more. We can see that that J squared term is going to reduce and go away. And that gives us this relationship at the bottom here. Now. Looking at this a bit more, we see that we have on the left-hand side here, we have the curl of the curl. And it may have been a while since you were in your calculus class, but this is something that is actually a special identity. This is a vector identity called curl of curl, and it has this special uh, equate. Um, this is directly equal to each other always, regardless of what your vector is. And the definition on the right-hand side can be substituted in for the left-hand side of our equation. So now we've applied this uh, vector identity, the curl of the curl, and we've put it in here. And this is going to help us make a couple more simplifications. But first, let's take a look at this uh, term here, and we'll call this the vector Laplacian. So note that this is a special term. We call it the vector Laplacian, and it's defined this way. But uh, what about this side? Well, we can see that we have, we have taken the divergence of the electric field a number of times in this class. And so let's go back, check Maxwell's equations. And sure enough, for the source-free medium, linear, and isotropic, uh, this is going to actually reduce to zero. So we actually have a definition now after applying that curl of the curl identity. So looking at that, we can say, well, from our source-free, and now bear in mind, this is only for our source-free assumption. This is why there are several videos relating to the assumptions we made. For the source-free, we can uh, substitute zero into here, and that's going to simplify this even more. Now we have the Laplacian of the electric field on the left-hand side, and then another term with a coefficient multiplied by the electric field on the right-hand side. Great, so this is getting quite a bit more simple. Let's move everything over to the right-hand side. Now we are going to see that this comes up so often that we're just going to call it something. We're going to give it a special variable name, and that special variable name is the propagation constant, and we will define it like this. Now, after defining our propagation constant like this, then we now have arrived at our final simplified homogeneous wave equation for the electric field E. The reason for defining the propagation constant this way and coming to the final form this way may be a bit beyond the scope of this course and more related to a partial differential equations course. However, this is one of the most simple forms of the homogeneous wave equation for the electric field. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video where we're going to derive the same thing for the H field and see that it is indeed very similar.